Okay, cool. Recording is on. I'll make you host if it will let me. <clears throat> you should be host now. And Alrighty. Got a couple other things I got to do. Okay, don't don't start just yet. We had some uh, issues in the classroom this morning. The uh, computer there kept quitting. Sure thing. It's pretty short live anyway. So I'm not sure I have everybody correctly invited. Okay, so let me escape from you. It's going to hurt. I'm putting you down in my lower right hand corner. Uh, okay, grab the invitation. Mass email, paste, and it did it wrong as usual. Okay, at some point the waiting room should uh, get big for you and you can um, let everybody in. And then I said, I, I know we have some new students, so I've got to get a new mailing list. So wait a minute or two and then go ahead and start. Okay, dope. I will fuss with the mailing list thing. Mm. Well, that's right, I'm using zoom to do that so i can put you in the corner it's still recording you perfect All right, how do I get damn email list? All right, we got 30 in the waiting room, so I'm going to let them in. Waiting rooms are weird, at least I in Zoom. I think in the upper right hand, you can, you can let them all in at once. I'm trying to get the email list, and they have changed the interface. Goddamn programmers, everybody hates them. You know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like the people who are uh, It's like the people who uh, think that IT is useless and all they do is sit around and waste time and uh, and then they need them all of a sudden.
I did mute everybody. So, um, yep. Okay, then. I think, uh, I think we're good enough to get going here. We got 42. Um, is everybody able to see my screen here and also hear me? Okay, someone said yes. That means we can go. All right. So the usual process for um, starting a lab, I go to the syllabus. Uh, today will be lab three. So I'll open them up. And then you can right click and save the actual uh, notebook file. Keep in mind that in order to actually do your lab and the homework, you uh, won't be able to do anything on this page. This is an HTML page. You can't, can't uh, write. Josh, I think you're one lab too far. I think today is lab two. Ah, yes. Uh, the holiday had me. Fair enough. Yeah, it's, it's lab two. Otherwise, they won't know what the hell I was talking about. Yep, that uh, makes sense. Okay. Same process, Thank though. Thank you. Get the uh, eight the notebook file for lab two this time. But um, all I was pointing out is that on the uh, HTML page, you can't actually execute code. So uh, we need to download the notebook file and get it up in Jupyter. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I have them downloaded. And then all you got to do is drag and drop. So I'm going to get both the lab two and the lab two take home. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to put them here. All right, lab two, lab two take home. And there we go. All righty then. So um, as usual, uh, some of the things you actually need to do in the lab itself is, you know, change your name to be appropriate and put in your R number. For me, it'll be this. All right. Now, what we're going to be looking at today is, um, a lot of the different really important categories of, uh, I, I guess we could say coding, but it's, um, it's going to be for a lot of the lab stuff you're doing. So like how you should both should and can name things, meaning there is a specific syntax to how you can name variables and stuff like that. Um, Operators, what kind of things you can do between variables and operands and other things. 
uh, all the arithmetic operators, stuff like that. So let's let's get into it. Um, let's see. I guess best place to start right here with variables. So what is a variable? A uh, variable is a name given to data that we want to store and manipulate. Variable has a name and a value. The value representation depends on what type of object the variable represents. The utility of variables comes in when we have a structure that is universal, but values of variables within the structure will change. Otherwise, it would be simple enough to just hardwire the arithmetic. Um, so what does any of that mean? Well, um, when I have uh, some number or value string that I want to remember and keep track of, what I do is I make a variable. So as said here, a variable has a name and a value. So if I am trying to um, calculate the area of uh, different yards I'm going to, because I'm in the business of mowing lawns, um, Two variables I probably want to have are the length and the width of the yard. I'll measure it once, and then measure the other one once, and then go about my business. I'm just going to store those. That way, I don't have to go back and measure it every time somebody asks me what the um, what those numbers are. Um, so it's important that I name my variables cleverly. That way, I'm not storing the length of the yard in a variable called gallons of water. That would be kind of silly. Um, and also, I need to give a value to that variable I just made. Initially, uh, at least in Python, there's a thing called Excel here. There's a, a value called none. It essentially means empty, means nothing. Um, your variables will start out not having any value. Um, but once you assign something to a variable, a value to a variable, then you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Just to see how that kind of works, let's say x is equal to 5. And uh, I want to print it out and uh, see what the value of my variable is. So right here, uh, don't worry too much about the syntax. I'm going to explain that here in a bit. But what I'm doing is I'm storing a value into the variable x. And I'm going to print that variable x. What happens when I print a variable? It prints out the value of that variable. So the value of x is 5. OK, all right, that's cool. What happens if I do? So I restarted my kernel, meaning that x is not declared. I didn't give it a, uh, a value at all. I'm not going to give it a value. So what's, what's going to happen when I hit go? Well, x is not defined. I can't print something that has not been declared or defined. So what, what do I got to do to, uh, to get this somewhere? Can I say x is equal to nothing? No. I have to give a value to my variable. So suppose we want to store the time of concentration for some hydrologic calculation. So to do this, we can name a variable, this right here, time of concentration, and then assign a value to that variable. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to say time of concentration is equal to 0, 0.0. All right. I can also, at any time I like, put print statements in my program so that I can see what's going on behind the scenes. Because I know that I assigned this here, or at least I gave the, the machine the code to do it. But did it actually do it? Well, I didn't get an error, which means that uh, this line had to have actually worked. After this assignment, the variable is created in the program and has a value of 0, 0.0. Use of a decimal point in the initial assignment establishes the variable as a float. A real variable is called a floating point representation or just a float. 
Now what I want to do is I'm going to add five to my time of concentration, which is my variable. And my variable has 0, 0.0 as a value. What's 0, 0.0 plus five? Well, it's, it's 5.0. Now, it may be kind of strange that this isn't a decimal. It's not 5.0. Yet when I add it to my variable, I get a decimal back. And that is because when we assign 0, 0.0 into time of concentration, it takes on the form of a float. And a float plus an integer comes out as a float in Python. If I were to make this just a straight up integer instead, it would be printing out a 0 and a 5. So what can we name our variables? Well, there's a couple of rules. Essentially, you can name it anything you want. You want your variable to be as descriptive as possible without being a million bajillion characters so that when you are working on your program and then you go to lunch and you come back and you get back to your, uh, your uh, program here. And uh, I have variable A. I decided to use as, as variable A. So I get back to work and uh, I'm like, OK, variable A. Wait a minute. What was variable A for? And if I don't have any comments, kind of like I have right here, I don't have any idea what this is supposed to be. I don't know that it's time of concentration. The question is, what is a float? Well, that's a bit of a deep question, actually. Um, the simple answer is that a float is a way we represent real numbers, kind of like a decimal. Um, a float has parts after the, uh, the decimal as opposed to an integer. So an integer is something like 1 uh, or 2 or negative 2. A float is something very similar, but it has a decimal part. So um, Every float can be represented, every integer can be represented as a float, but not the other way around. So 2.1 works totally fine as a float, but there's no way to represent 2.1 as an integer. So you can think of it as a decimal, but they're slightly different. All right, so what are the rules for uh, naming a variable? Well, uh, the variable names can contain letters, so lowercase, uppercase, numerals, 0 to 9 or underscores. The first character can't be a number. Other than that, you can pretty much name it whatever you want. Um, they can be reasonably long, I think like 120 characters or so. Um, you don't want it to be too long because you're, you're trading simplicity for specificity a lot of times. If my name of my variable is 120 characters long, I should probably think of a more concise way of saying what I need to say. So here are some variable names. Runtime, it's all characters. Underscore two runtime, it's fine because it does not start with a number. Runtime two is also fine, doesn't start with a number. However, if I were to try to do this instead, uh, we're going to have a problem because my variable name is invalid. And now it's fine. Uh, another thing when you're naming variables is that there are some reserved words that you can't use as a variable name because they have a pre-assigned meaning in Python. So this is like, uh, you notice when I write the word print in a code cell, it turns green. Well, why does it turn green? It's because it's reserved. It is a function name. Print is a function that takes whatever arguments I put in here and gives me a, a string literal out to the console. So what happens if I try to name a literal, or name a variable as print? So my print variable is, I don't know, hello. All right, so I added that, everything's fine. 
But if I had to change this to the actual name print, we're going to have a problem because now we are dealing with the function print. This is a reserved word and we can't use it for this purpose. Same thing for like while wow, it's reserved. Generally, when the text turns green, you know that it's um, used for something. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Uh, why does it say parcel tongue? Because that is a joke. And I suppose we are getting to the point to where um, Harry Potter is now going to be uh, not, not in the collective uh, consciousness anymore. But uh, until, until that point, I will continue to, uh, to make jokes about it. Uh, but uh, that means you're reading. Let's see, what are you not liking? Huh. I have made it angry. So that's an interesting feature we just ran into. Um, if we have time later, I'll talk more about it. But what was my solution to something that seemed like it shouldn't be happening? I just restarted the kernel. Helps a lot. Uh, many times when dealing with technology, first uh, troubleshooting step is turn it off, turn it off, back on. OK, so that is variables, assigning stuff to them what names you can give them. Here's one more thing we can talk about. Someone asked what a float was earlier, and I kind of gave an explanation. But let's say my float variable, my integer variable, my string variable. OK, well, I now have three variables that I want to print to the screen. What am I supposed to do in order to tell the, the kernel, well, I'm about to type something here, and it's going to be a floating point. And I'm about to type something here, and it's going to be an integer. I'm about to type something here, it's going to be a string. How does, how does it know what kind of variable to make? Because this is, needs to be a string variable, and this needs to be a float variable, and this needs to be an integer variable. How am I, what, um, how, how do I make it? know that uh, the right kind of variable is being, it's being reserved. Does anybody have an idea? Type. Well, it turns out that in Python, what we have are untyped variables, meaning that the machine is smart enough to infer from context what kind of variable you're dealing with. So what do I mean by that? Well, what do I expect to see if uh, I want to run an, if I want to see a float? Well, I better see nothing but digits and possibly a uh, well, nothing but digits and one decimal point, and you could possibly have a negative sign in front. So if I see uh, zero nine point, that is valid for float. Um, if I see zero nine point zero, that is also valid for a float. If I see this, I know it is no longer valid as a float because the P character isn't in my list of rules for seeing a float. But this is a float. What about an integer? What, what, what can I start seeing for an integer that makes me know it's no longer an integer? Well, if I see a decimal point, I know it's no longer an integer. I can have a negative in front, that's fine. What do I expect to see if I'm looking at a string? Well, I know there have to be two quotes. Either that one, the double quotes, or the single quotes, either way. And then anything inside of here is fine. Not, not 
anything, but almost anything you can think of. So nowhere in here did I say make this a string variable and make this an integer variable, make this a float variable. It's just going to infer it off the top of uh, as soon as I do it. So it prints out 9.0. It knows it's a float. It prints out negative 9. It knows an integer. And it prints out this gobbledygook and knows that it's a string. Um, this function here I used, it's called type. So print and type. These two functions are debugging lifesavers. I would uh, commit them to memory and use them liberally. All right, so that's enough about variables. Let's talk about what we can actually do with data because data comes in, we'll call them two big forms. Uh, one is a variable and two is something hard-coded. What's hard-coded? Negative nine. It's hard-coded, it's never gonna change. It has a value of negative nine. A uh, variable can have value of whatever I assign to it. So what can I do with data? Well, I can apply operators to them to transform it in some way. So let's look at what kind of operators we can use. We've already been using one, and that's the equal sign. So the equal sign used in variable definition is called the assignment operator. So I would, I would even go further and say, if you use the equal sign in Python outside of like quotes, so just one equal sign, this is assignment. Um, there's a long and very boring to everybody here, except for maybe two or three people, uh, debate in programming languages as to whether, well, as to what symbol we need to use here. So what, what am I actually doing or wanting to do that this symbol right here accomplishes? Well, what I'm wanting to do is say, take variable x and put sign value five into it. That's what I'm doing. I'm assigning value five into variable X. Well, um, what if I want to otherwise do compare the value of variable X to five? Well, here's where that long and boring debate comes in because this symbol is what has been mostly decided on for assignment, which is strange because in your math classes, this symbol here means this. So when you look at this right here, and you don't know anything about programming languages, but you've been through high school. You say, okay, is X equal to five? Well, I don't know. What is X? Very important you keep it straight that the single equal sign is for assignment, meaning I want to take the value five and put it into X. If I want to do comparison, we have that. Uh... Surely we have it later. If we don't have it later, I'll show it to you. This one's for comparing. Okie doke. So I'm going to assign 5 into x, and I'm going to assign 10 into y. After that, I'm going to print out x and y. And then after that, I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to say uh, assign the value of y into x. So the way the uh, statement reads is what I wrote right here. So. I'm going to put like left hand side here and right hand side here. The way you read this is take variable left hand side and put into it the value of RHS. So it stands for left hand side and right hand side. That's the way you read this. Assign right hand side into left hand side. It always goes that way. You don't assign the other way around. If you do want to assign the other way around, you have to swap them. So why do I bring that up? It's because we have this line right here. Based on what I just said, can anybody give me the reading of, uh, of this line right here? So can, you tell, can someone tell me in English what this uh, line is saying to do? Hmm. 
new value of x is the value of y. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. The value of x will be the value of y. <clears throat> All right, so let's run this, see what it does. Well, I print out x, y, which is 5, 10. Sounds good. And then I say, assign into x the value of y. OK, well, what's the value of y? Value of y is 10. So assign into x value 10. And then print them both out. When we assigned values to the variables x and y, they started as 5 and 10. When we wrote them to the console, we got what we expected. Then when we swapped them around to assign y into x, we got both equaling to being equal to 10. What happens if I swap these? Well, exactly what you would expect. Um, oops, that's not the line I wanted to do. Exactly not what I would have expected would have happened there. But now I'm going to swap these and say, place into variable y the value of variable x. And I get 5 and 5. OK, so what's with this hash symbol? Uh, we truly are getting to the point where it is now more commonly known as a hashtag than a pound sign. Um, the hash symbol indicates that everything following it on this line is comment, meaning this is here to be read uh, by the user, not the pro, not the interpreter. Uh, it's a lot like a markdown cell without uh, all this nice stuff. Um, Almost every language you'll ever deal with has a syntax for writing comments. They don't all use the same symbol. Just if you don't know the symbol, it's almost um, here. Uh, the next 30 seconds are going to be uh, very useful for programming anytime in the future. If you don't know the syntax for something in the language, go to Google and then type language and then syntax, and then whatever the thing you're trying to do, comment. And usually one of the top ones are going to be fine to get. So here you go. This is the simplest way to do comments in a uh, Python program. There's some more, uh, more ways to do comments that if people are curious, I'll talk about later. You can do multi-line comments, meaning I can say there's a symbol. It's something, it's not that, it's some symbol. And then I can, whatever I want, some other symbol, and it'll make everything between these two points a comment. Sometimes that's nice to have. Okie doke. Um, so that's the assignment operator, meaning assign into the left-hand side, the value that's on the right-hand side. Let's look at the arithmetic operators. Um, depending on your view, your philosophy assignment either is or isn't an arithmetic operator, but that's a discussion for math nerds. And I know we don't got any math nerds in here. Uh, so what are the ones we're gonna be looking at? Well, right now, um, the ones I am interested in, we have plus, minus, uh, multiply, division, integer division, modulus, and exponentiation. The reason I'm doing it this way, you'll should become clear in a minute because these other ones are a different category. So what do these do? Well, do exactly what is listed right here. This is the addition. Um, operator you've been using forever, adds values x and y. Same thing with subtract, um, multiply, and divide. These pretty standard. If you uh, don't know how one of these work, um, step one, say something in the uh, chat, and uh, I'll try to help you out. And step two, the system has failed you. Uh, so those are those, the first four. Let's talk a little bit about this one. What, what does this do? It's called floor division. Um, it's also sometimes called integer division. Me, what it means is when you do division, you have remainders, you know, the yucky stuff. What do you do with them? Well, you can either round 
or list them. So what is five divided by two? It's either 2.5, or I can say how many times does two go evenly into five? That'll be two. And that's what this one does. This one here, modulus, it is kind of one of the complementing things here. So let's return to five divided by two, it's 2.5. Well, that is two goes into five, two times with a remainder of one. And the remainder is what our modulus here can get us. Lastly, we have the exponentiation, meaning x to the power of y. So 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 2 to the third power is 8, so on and so forth. Now, I left these out because they're all the same kind of thing, depending on what this symbol is. The way these work is I'm saying I've got a variable x. And what I want to do is I want to add 2 to x. So I want to say x is equal to x plus 2. Or maybe I want to say x is equal to x times 2, whatever I want. There's this neat little um, syntax you can use to say x times equals 2, so that these are the same thing. And that's uh, applied to all of those. OK, so let's see how this works. I'm going to put x as 10 and y as 5. And then I'm going to do all the stuff we were just talking about. Okie doke. So we print them out, 10 and 5. What's 10 plus 5? 15. What is 10 minus 5? It's 5. What's 10 times 5? It's 50. What is 10 divided by 5? Well, it's 2. But this division just goes ahead and makes everything afloat because it is prepared to handle something like this. 2.2 is the result of 11 divided by 5. Now, however, what is, um, that's funny because I actually made the, uh, the result that um, it was expecting in the next one. What is 10 plus 1, which is 11, and then floor division by 5? Well, the question is, how many times does 5 go into 11 evenly? And the answer is 2. And what's the remainder of that? Is 1. And then what is 10 to the fifth power? It is uh, 100,000, apparently. Well, I guess that makes sense, yeah. Um, here are the assignment operators we were just talking about, meaning I can kind of do a quick cheat of saying that x is equal to x plus 2 by just doing x plus equal 2. Um, we talked a little bit earlier when somebody asked what is a float about data types. And that is, uh, so that means we kind of cover a little bit of this. Um, but uh, we'll go over a quick summary. Um, the ones we're going to be worrying about are mainly integers, floats, and uh, strings. So integers are whole numbers, reals, well, I guess floats, are like decimals, and strings are It's one of those terms that it's hard to define it without saying, without giving a circular definition. Um, a string is something that is to be read literally rather than saying that the symbol has any value to it. Um, so what's an integer? Uh, it's a number without any fractional portion, so nothing after the decimal point. Uh, you can have anything from negative infinity to positive infinity, um, except for those specifically, because infinity is not a number. So as big of a negative number or as large as a positive number as you like. But you can't have decimal. So 1.1 is not an integer. What's float? Well, it's a lot like an integer, except we have decimal support. Uh, there is something a little tricky with floats. So if I take x and assign it to 1, I print. Uh, both x, let's see, let's see, x, x is value of x and type. All right. So if I run this, it, sh it says that x has value 1 and it has type integer. 
what happens if I do this? Anybody tell me, will the output change when I run this? Now, I wouldn't ask that question if it were um, impossible for you to answer me, because it's exactly what we're talking about right here. When I put a decimal point, even though I don't put any digits afterward, it goes ahead and says, yep, you're trying to make a float. It's a little strange. Just look out for it. Uh, the last thing is a string. And it's kind of what I just talked about um, in that uh, it is meant to be read literally. So my name is a variable. My cat name is a variable. Dusty Mass and Kilos is a variable. Theodore, in quote, is a string. It has no value. It is a string. So let's uh, let's let's make some variables and see what they do. So I'm gonna make one, two, three, four, five variables. I've got what kind of uh, what kind of variable is this? Integer. Good job. What about this one? This is not an integer. It's not an integer because there's a decimal portion. Once there's a decimal portion, it's a float. Uh, what about this one? What kind is this? I'll give you a hint, these two are the same kind. These are both strings. What about this one? Yes, it is also a string. It is not the float 7.48. It is the string 7 period 48427. All right. So we are going to mix and match printing some actual literal strings and some variables. So print all about me. Done. Um, then print name is use the variable. Mass is use the variable and put kilograms at the end. And that's what we're doing for all of these things here. They're just print statements that use both uh, literal strings and variables. So we see a phone number, cat's name, uh, and some fun stuff we can do. I'm going to add the value of variable 1, 2, and 3 together, which will be Dusty, Theodore, and 7.4827. And I'm going to add them all together. What happens? What is the result of adding strings? You, it's, it's smushing together. It's called concatenation for the uh, correct term. But um, if you apply the plus symbol to two strings, It'll smush them together. If you, well, I encourage you to experiment by applying the other operators to strings and see what they do. But we don't have time for that, so we're not going to do that. Another thing we can do is we can change variable from one type to another. Um, some will be valid and some won't. So let's say I've got an integer, a float, and a string. Let's print them out. I'm going to print my integer as a float. Well, what's my integer? Is 234. What will it be as a float? Will it be 234.0? If I try to take a float as an integer, what it's going to do is it's going to truncate off the decimal portion, we'll call it. Um, if I try to make an integer as a string, it will just put out the quote 234. This would be in red text if it were up here. Um, we can make an integer as a hex. What is 234 as a hex? It's this. Um, e and A are, well, I'm not going to go into what hexadecimal is. I, I would be happy to because I'm a nerd, but we just don't have time. Um, also, we have the type function. Type is very nice. Be, be very niceful. Niceful? That's not a word. Let's see. Yeah, we got, we got time. So we've talked about all these operators, arithmetic operators, essentially. And um, we've used each of them that we've talked about, at least. And we've talked about types. So what happens if I put together a bunch of operators into a list? Well, that's a bad word. Uh, into a um, all on one line. What happens if I use a bunch of them? Well, from that, we have what is called an expression. 
this is an algebraic expression um, that you, you're all used to. It. it is exactly what you think it is. It's going to be apply the PIMDAS rules of algebra and store the value into the variable x1. So this expression is a value from left to right, and in words is into x1 place the result of 7 plus the result of, because multiplication and division have more precedence, so we put parentheses around it, and then subtract 1 from the whole thing. So how is this going to work? Well, left to right, um, we're going to be dividing 3 times 6 by 2, and then subtracting 1, and we'll get the float of 8. Add 7 to that, and we'll get 15. So if I execute it, we'll get that. If I were to change this from uh, floor division to regular division, oops, I already did that one. Uh, the type is what changes. The uh, Once you use this symbol, the, the kernel is basically saying, all right, I'm expecting decimals. Even if I don't get them, I'm just expecting them. All right, the last thing we can talk about, um, and then I'll see if I can quickly go through the home. I'll probably do that in, in the uh, after the time's up, is examples of input and output. We've done a bunch of output. That's what this is. Every time I execute something, oh, look, I'm going to clear all the outputs. It's gone. Well, it, it comes right back. This is the output. Well, we haven't really done any input. We can use do input by using the following syntax. Input, just like the print statement. And then whatever is in here is just a nice message to the uh, user to say what we want them to input. So I'm going to run this. It's going to say, please enter float one. OK, 3.4159. There's one. Please enter float two. Uh, OK, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. There you go. I have given it float one and float two. And I've assigned those values into my variables float one and float two. I can print them out. They're already in float format, so this doesn't really do anything. I'll show you um, here in a second if I were to make one an integer instead. Print them out again. And then I'm going to say, is float one greater than float two? The result of that would be true. What's float one plus float two? What's that? What's float one regular division by float two? It's that. Um, let's see. Three point Okay. And I'm going to say, um, hmm. I'll try to be clever here. And I'm going to put the string five. See what happens. Print them out. Uh, moreover, I'm going to do this type float two. All right. So the first one's a float, just like we'd expect. The second one is the string containing the symbol five, and it's a string. So if I were to try to do some uh, operations, it kind of doesn't know what to do. It's trying to add a float and a string. And what, oh well. Well, what we can do is we can cast one thing to a float. Let's see, could not convert string to float. Uh, I probably, I was trying to be clever here. And I ended up being a little too clever. I probably need to put a point zero there. The point I was trying to get across from one before, and one, is you can cast an integer to a float. You can also cast a string to a float. I would have just needed to put a decimal point there. So yeah, that's input and output. Now we are two minutes over, but I guess we did start a little late. So it's not that big a deal. Quickly going to scan through the homework. You've got the usual. Change your name to the right stuff. This, don't really need to worry about it too much. All it does is, let's say you get into a weird situation where you need to debug stuff. I can help if we have all this information. All right, exercise one. We got a raw cell. Change it to a code cell and run it. We need to not have the comments, but we need to actually run the script. What is the value of area? Area appears to be a variable, so what's that? The value. Copy the working script below and add necessary code to output the value of area. So the result of this needs to have 
the value of my uh, variable area needs to be outputted somehow. Exercise two. Sa second verse, same as the first. We have a raw cell. We don't. Uh, we want to be executing raw uh, code, not raw. So we want to know of the six variables we have here, which ones are integers. Next one, what's the difference between the following two expressions? Uh, the next one, what is the division results of doing a, um, this is going to be a floor division, and why is it uh, value zero? Exercise three, um, we've got some variables, changes to code, and now you need to be executing the commented lines by um, either uncommenting, uncommenting them, or what I would recommend copying them and then uncommenting the result. Okie doke. So that is lab two and homework. Today should be Wednesday. So I think lab zero is either due or will be due soon. Okay, that's, uh, that's everything I got. And only four minutes over, could be worse. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else they want to get off their chest? When is this lab due? That's a great question. Well, rather than teaching you, uh, or rather than giving you a fish, I'm going to teach you how to fish. So I have to swap my browser, because I don't use Edge. Let's go to Blackboard. Let's sign into Blackboard. Going to keep signing into Blackboard. All right, we'll go to our class. This is section one. Go to our labs. Don't see it up yet. Well, let us assume it were up, which it will be sh shortly. I'm going to pretend that this says lab two, even though it clearly doesn't. Due date will be right there. So that's where the due date will be. Will we also receive this recording? Uh, as far as I know, when we record a lab, which is going to be always, we're going to attempt to render it, upload it, and share it with you as best as we can. Sometimes the system doesn't like it and bad things happen. But as far as I know, yes, you will be receiving the recording. Package. Okay. So I didn't see any other questions. I'll have those labs up in a minute. Okay. Well, I'll be here for the next four minutes or so. If anybody has any questions, uh, or I do have some questions. Sure, what's up? But it's just like uh, kind of personal. I don't know if we can like go to a Zoom meeting, like a different one. Um, I suppose if what you're implying is that you have questions that uh, need to be in a one-on-one -on -one setting, uh, if if it's specifically for me. I would. It's about the course itself. OK. Uh, um, just, I guess stick around until everybody's gone. How about that? OK. Um, so is this lab one or is this lab two? What we did today was lab zero two. OK. okay. I got confused too because of Monday. First. What was that? And um, the lab two that we just did right now is due on the 21st. Um, looking at my calendar and adding seven, that should be the 26th. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, uh -huh. um, sometimes the, what, what's the function for type? T-Y-P-E. Yes. Right there, yeah, whatever you want it in the parentheses. 
it's like type sometimes um oh, i I'm see sorry. like like print like type yes yes it's right here there's yes. an example of it um not exactly numbered but it's it's here yeah. what's the function uh, the function is called type. It is T-Y-P-E. That is the name of the function. Um, what does it do? Could you say that again? What does it do? What does type do? Type takes, well, you know, that's a good question. Let's pretend I have no idea. <laughs> Python type. Documentation. All right. Type is a built in function. It takes an object as an argument and it returns the type of that object. The return value is a type object and generally the same object as returned by something you don't need to worry about. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yep. Okay, there are three people. Myself, Dr. Cleveland, and you. What's up? Yeah. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. We should stop the recording. <laughs> right? Okay. Or at least pause it. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you sure the Zoom is not going to close? Like, it's not going to kick us out of the meeting? No. Um, I appear to not have the, because I didn't hit the go button, I don't have the pause button or the stop button. Oh, okay. Only Dr. Cleveland has it. All right. If you want, I think you can put it into chat. That's what it, it best would be just wait for the recording to stop. Okay. So I will regain control and I'm going to end the deal.